So here's the deal. If you haven't watched the video that I made before this one about the three different sounds from three different speakers, go watch that. Stop watching this video right now because the rest of what I'm going to talk about won't make any sense. Go watch it. I'll put the card right up here. Click that card or click in the description below for the other video. With that said, let's talk about the three different sound clips that you got to hear. What I had done was I had recorded with binaural mics, so microphones fit around my ear, sitting in my home theater, three different speakers. I labeled them A, B, and C, and then I played you a sound clip for each one of them. And then I asked you just to give me your feedback on what you heard. And I asked you to try to focus not on the tonality or the timbre, but specifically and strictly on the soundstage characteristics depth, width, imaging, placement, etc. Speaker A was the Arendel 1723 bookshelf speaker. Speaker B was the Philharmonic BMR mini monitor. Speaker C was the Klipsch RP 600M2. Now look, I'm the first one to admit that that whole sound demo video and then this one, it's not going to be the perfect pairing. That sound demo video, I tried to make it as good as I could by EQing each of the speaker's responses to be roughly the same, but it wasn't dead on. So there is some tonality differences, but that's also why I asked you to focus on the soundstage as best you could. There's a saying that I love, and I, I think it's great. It is, perfection is the enemy of progress. And Basically, what that means is if you're scared to try something new, if you're scared to put yourself out there, then you're never going to progress. You're, you're never going to learn anything and grow. And that's why I don't mind making foibles and stumbles and falls on this channel, because I'm definitely not all knowing. And what I hope is that this is kind of a community effort that we learn and we grow together and when we just have fun, because that's what audio is supposed to be. It's not supposed to be one person ruling them all, telling you... Uh, Yea, verily, ye shall enjoy this speaker because I do. I mean, uh, you know, that's kind of that's kind of lame. Um, but yeah, so I just want to make that clear. I, I totally get that the sound demos wasn't perfect. I'm going to try to improve upon that, but it doesn't mean that we can't try to learn together and you know learn as we grow. Me in the room without listening back over headphones, just me in the room. What I heard lined up very well to listening back to the recordings of the binaural mics with headphones. But if I listened with loudspeakers, so if I played that video, played those samples, and listened to those samples with loudspeakers, it was pointless, completely pointless. You absolutely needed to have headphones, and that's why I asked you to do in that, in that little demo. So if you didn't listen with headphones, I encourage you to go back and do that again. It really is quite different in terms of soundstage characteristics. Just talking about the design of these speakers, the Arendel and the Klipsch both use waveguides, whereas the BMR does not. The waveguides are going to constrict the sound that normally would extend further out onto the baffle and then out into the room. It takes that sound and it basically forces it into like a, a V shape. That's that's essentially what a waveguide does. It constricts the higher frequencies to better control their dispersion angles. The BMR speaker is basically the, the complete opposite of that, about as far as you can get, where it is a thin ribbon tweeter with a very wide dispersion angle. And from those two design methods alone, you can kind of guess how much room interaction you're going to get from each of these type speakers. And that also explains why that to some degree, the Arendel and the Klipsch speakers sound very similar in terms of soundstage and the BMR stands out like it's night and day. Now, I'm not saying that the Klipsch and the Arendel are the same. They, they do have different flares in their waveguide angling, but they're more similar than they're not in this regard. Now, with that said, I also really have no issues saying that what I provided you in the demo and then listened back over my headphones sounded very, very close in terms of soundstage to what I actually heard in the room with just 
my silver ears. They're not golden, but they're not bronze. I think they're kind of silver. Anyway. And the reason I say that is because there were certainly differing opinions as far as what you all heard versus what I heard and then even what others heard. But what I did notice was pretty consistent and I found it really interesting that a good bit of people said the same things that I heard, which was that samples A and C, so the Arendal and the clip speakers, sounded very similar. And indeed, they do sound very similar in the room in terms of soundstage and even tonality to some degree. But remember, I had EQ'd the tonality for all three speakers to be close to the same as best I could get it at the time. But if we go and look at the data, I think there's some good rationale for that. The one that really stands out was the B speaker, which was the BMR speaker. And I specifically did that. I chose that speaker because in my review, I talked about how the soundstage of that speaker was so wide that it actually made imaging seem less precise. And for me, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that the clip speaker images so much better in terms of precision, but it comes at a cost of the soundstage width. And I also noted in my review of the BMR that depending on your room, you may have the same sense of space, the same subjective opinion that I did regarding its precision of instruments, or you may have a different opinion because when I listened in my downstairs living room, which is a, a totally different environment, what I found was I had a, a little bit of a different takeaway compared to my home theater environment where the downstairs environment didn't really have such a diffuse soundstage. It was a little bit more precise. Now, it wasn't as precise as the clips or the Arendelle, but it was a little bit more precise. So the room certainly had an effect in my subjective opinion. And I told you all of this stuff in that specific BMR review. The data is really what I want to talk about. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to transition to my computer rather than focus on frequency response because the response in the room with these speakers equalized is going to be different than the anechoic response that I have on my website. And because I try to equalize them to sound pretty much the same, what I'm going to focus on really just for this video specifically is going to be the horizontal radiation. So the horizontal dispersion, which is the sound that comes out of the speaker and then hits the side walls and then is reflected back to your ears. Because I feel like that's the really important stuff. I personally feel like that is one major factor into soundstage characteristics and the other one certainly would be left right matching and ideally you have a speaker pair that is balanced in frequency response and they match because any kind of imbalance you have from left to right will cause certain elements of the soundstage to wander or slip so let's just take an easy example if i was recording a mono sound just my voice in mono and then you played it back over a stereo pair of speakers, my voice would be dead center. Now, if you took 3 dB off the left speaker, then my voice is going to move to the opposite side because that opposite side now is going to sound louder. And that's what I mean when I say left-right matching in terms of output levels. So you could even take an equalizer and go through and, and fine tune and tweak those two sides to make sure they match in frequency response at the seated position. But for the purpose of this video, I'm also going to assume that the left-right balance is pretty much the same. I tried to do that with my equalizer, so I'm hoping that I got that pretty much right. And then we are just left with the horizontal radiation of each of the speakers and how it's going to interact with the room. That's what we're going to focus on in this particular video. Now we're going to flip over to the horizontal radiation width. And this is one way that I like to provide the data. It's a MATLAB script that I wrote. I take the clipple data. I dump it into text files, and then I use my MATLAB script to write this out. And this is just a bird's eye view of what the radiation pattern looks like. So if you're looking down at the top of the speaker, you can kind of get an idea of how wide the radiation or how narrow the radiation would be. With most waveguided speakers, what I see typically is anywhere from about 30 degrees to about 60 degrees in width. Generally speaking, I like to look at just the higher SPL area, and I just look at the red just as an off-the-cuff idea. With this, I can see that the Arendelle speaker is, in terms of width, I'd say about 
plus or minus 50 degrees. So it goes from 50 degrees to the left, 50 degrees to the right, and the mid frequencies, and as it transitions to the mid high and the higher frequencies, it's at about plus or minus 40 degrees, evidenced by this line right here. Now we have the BMR, which is <laughs> so far different from the Arendelle in terms of its radiation width. I would say this speaker is closer to about plus or minus 80 degrees pretty much throughout. So in some points, it's almost twice as wide in radiation. And this means that with the BMR speaker, there's a whole lot more room interaction. Now we'll flip over to the clip speaker and we can see the clip speaker is more narrow than the BMR. I would say it's about plus or minus 60 degrees to the mid range and it narrows up a little bit as it goes to the higher frequency to about plus or minus 40 degrees. We can also see that the clip isn't quite as linear in response as the BMR and the Arendelle, and that's evidenced by namely this dip centered around eight kilohertz. But this dip pretty much tracks throughout the off-axis response, so we can see this dip also occurs in this darker red right here, and it just translates out into this lighter shade of red out here. To go back to the Arendelle, we can see a little bit more easily now just how more controlled the Arendelle is compared to that clip speaker that we just looked at. And again, the Arendelle isn't quite as wide as the clips, but they're pretty close. And in my opinion, this data really tells you the majority of what you need to know in regards to the soundstage. Now, I'm not saying it's everything, but just these three sets of data tell us that A and C, so the clips and the Arendelle speaker, are going to have roughly the same soundstage characteristics, which they do when you listen to the speaker. You, that's they're even hard to tell apart. I mean, there's not a, a night and day difference between the two. And that the B speaker, so the BMR speaker, is gonna have a lot more room interaction. And more than likely because of that, it's gonna be more diffuse. And that's what I heard. And that's what the majority of you reported back hearing when you listen through headphones. So that's really it for this video. Like I said, I really wanna just kind of recap what the demo was about. I initially was going to try to get, provide you all stats, but the adjectives that were used to describe people's interpretations were pretty wildly varied. But I will say that just kind of glancing through them, what I noticed is for the most part, people's descriptions of what they heard tended to vibe with mine as long as they were listening back on headphones. And again, that is to say that for me, Speakers A and C, the Arendelle and the Klipsch, were more narrow in soundstage. They sounded very much alike in soundstage, but they also had very good precision, whereas the BMR was a lot more wide in soundstage. It actually sounded a lot more diffuse. And some people even commented that it sounded like one speaker was out of phase. And hey, that's actually what I thought. I even, during my demo, I actually had to get up to make sure that the polarity was correct on the speakers and that one wasn't out of phase. But another way to verify that is the bass is solid and taut right in the center. When a speaker is out of phase, you're not going to have that. The vocals aren't going to be at the center. So really what I wound up getting was just more diffuseness. And, and when I say that, what I mean to say is that, yes, the instrumentation, the voices and things like that were in place in the soundstage. But compared to the Arendelle and the Klipsch, which use waveguided speakers, so there's more narrow radiation pattern horizontally. Those two speakers were much more precise. I mean, you could pinpoint, boom, there's the singer, boom, there's the violin, there's the kick drum, there's the snare, you name it, you could pinpoint it. But with the BMR, it didn't really have that kind of precision. Now, again, I'm not saying that any of these speakers are better than the other one. That's at all 100% not the purpose of this video, and it wasn't the purpose of the video that preceded this one that this one is based off of. The whole purpose really is to just to give you some insight into what I hear and some insight into how you can correlate the measurements with what you're likely to hear in your room. It's not a, this is the best one, go buy this one. These things are subjective, uh, but the preference is subjective as well. So what you like may be different than what I like, and it could have to do with the room or it could just have to do with some of the, I guess the trade-offs that you're willing to accept, like loudness. Do you want a speaker that can get loud and have maybe higher sensitivity, but maybe not as much low end? Or are you okay accepting lower sensitivity, maybe not one that can get quite as loud, 
but it gives you a little bit more low end base. These are trade offs. These are just typical things that you deal with as an audiophile or a regular old Joe like me who just wants to enjoy their music. And you need to understand that these things are real. These trade offs are real. They're compromises in the design for one way or another. And when it comes time to actually buy something, those are the things that are helpful to know because then you make the best purchase decision for yourself. With all of that said, I do appreciate you watching this video. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing, hit the thumbs up, all that cool stuff. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this. And I'll try to do more of these and I'll try to make them a little bit better. I think personally, I feel like I kind of hit the target that I was aiming for, which was honesty first. Hey, this isn't going to be perfect, but then make it fun and make it somewhat of an enjoyable learning experience. And I feel like this video kind of does that or the pair of videos kind of do that, but I will certainly keep trying to improve my methodology and I hope you stick around. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you appreciate it. And I do hope you learned something. And with that said, I'm out. You all take care. Have a good one. Talk to you later. Peace.